My name's Chris Gearman. Third generation owner at Little Dutch Bakery. I've worked at this bakery personally before I just retired for 40 years. Um, I worked in here as a teenager part-time um, to earn money and then I took it over full-time. I graduated in 1982 and I started working full-time two weeks after I graduated. My grandfather came from Germany a long time ago and he actually landed in Dayton, Ohio as a machinist, but he was a baker in Germany. The original bakery is about two blocks down the street on the other side of the street. And um, my grandma worked in the storefront and he was the baker. But then they bought this side and after my dad got out of World War II as the head baker on a ship, he took over the bakery on this side of the street and his twin brother has a butcher shop on the other side of the street. So the, the big joke is there's the butcher and the baker. When I took it over, I essentially I was really 18 and my dad gave me the reins when I was taking over the bakery. I was around 18, graduated. He wanted to step away from the business and it took me at least a good five years to kind of get comfortable with what I was doing. My dad had three bakers and then some of them quit, some of them got hired and I would learn more and more from each one of them. Everybody had their own style and whatnot. So Turner, you know, I, I was a total scratch baker. I took uh, decorating classes when I was 18. And then my dad showed me how to decorate cakes. And I just kind of did it by practice. So uh, yeah, it's, it's matured me to some point. I'm still a little immature, everybody might know that, but you know, that's just cause I'm having fun. If you don't have fun with what you're doing, then you shouldn't be doing what you're doing, really. Who I am now, I'm well versed in the baking industry, you know, being a baker, you have to be somewhat of a mathematician and a chemist. I think I'm well prepared to say that I'm an expert in my field. I, you have to do things, you have to grow a little bit with the way the world is. Uh, we do keep the same recipes in the same style of baking as my father and my grandfather did. I would say about 95% of them are old school. But you know, you have to sort of reinvent yourself when you're doing things. So when you're making a variety of things, when you call yourself a bakery, I'm not just a cake shop. I'm not just a donut shop. I make coffee cakes, cakes, breads, and you have to learn all of that stuff to put it out there. But like I said, I have a ton of family recipes that people don't even see sometimes because you know the time restraint held me back from making things that I didn't have time to make. And being the owner, it allows me a, a lot of time to experiment without any overhead people telling me, hey, don't do it this way or don't do it that way. I just like to be myself. Um, being that I am third generation as far as challenges go, um, Actually, it's, it's, it's on the plus side, being a third generation. Um, people know who we are. They know we're consistent. Um, you know, we've been here long enough to know that. We've succeeded for over 101 years. And there's, with every generation brings more generations coming in. Now, I, I've seen little kids when they were babies grow up with me. You know, and now they're in their 20s and 30s now and they still come in. So if you can keep a business going that long with multiple generations, then that's a positive. Um, I think we've done that well at the bakery because I have good storefront girls. You know, uh, they're the face of the bakery when I'm not here. I had good bakers and just having that, that puzzle put together, you need all of those mechanicals working together to make it successful. And people know who we are. Um, we're a fixture in the community. So what more can I say other than that? We've done it, you know? Pretty much what I'm gonna miss most about Little Dutch is the fact that it's family, like it's home for a lot of us. We grew up here, come here every week. This was our cheers, basically. That's gonna be something that's gonna be hard to duplicate anywhere. My dad used to bring me here. Um, he passed away recently. So, kind of very sweet you guys closed it down too. I've come here my whole entire life. My grandparents lived here. My mom brought me here. 
I route my daughter and my granddaughter wherever she went. <laughs> Typical shift would be waking up, complaining, coming into work, getting started with making the breads and the Danish rolls and all that. Then the other bakers would come in and then we would uh, take stuff out of the oven, ice them, start donuts. And while either I was doing the donuts or I had my helpers doing the donuts, I would go up front and decorate any cakes I had to do while they were back here doing that in the past couple years here. Uh, before that, I did pretty much the, the donuts and the cakes. Uh, I was lucky enough to have some, uh, some good employees to take over back here for me. You know, working 16 hour days sometimes, you think you can't do it when it's coming at you, but when you do it and the day's passed, you saw that you got through it and everything's fine. Every day is a challenge. Every day you just gotta take it one day at a time and meet that challenge. The most popular, according to my kids and all my friends and everything, the donuts. You said you can't get a fresher donut in town. And I've done very well with the donuts. My favorite thing to get here is donuts. The glazed donuts, hands down. Uh, I like vanilla cake donuts. Cake donuts with the chocolate icing and sprinkles. That's my favorite. And awesome uh, cinnamon balls. I don't think I can pick a favorite one. They're all so great. It's, you can really feel the love. Probably the cheese danishes or the, uh, the uh, donut twist. A good glaze twist donuts. That's my favorite. That's where I come down here again. I travel all the way from Mason to come over here and get these donuts. So it's a nice little drive. The, the pecan danish with the maple frosting. Donuts. My favorite thing to get here is the coffee cakes. I love the, what's it called, the beehive. That's my favorite one. <laughs> You know, we make the coffee cakes too. We don't make just three or four different kinds. We had 10 different kinds. You know, if you want to go back to 2004, I won the um, best coffee cake in Cincinnati with our Beehive coffee cake. Didn't even know they were having the contest. And that just took off. I was making three a day. That week I made 400. It's a coffee cake that's got cinnamon rolled up similar to a cinnamon roll. And it's got honey and butter in the pan like you would if you're making a pineapple upside down cake with pecans in it. So after it bakes, you flip it upside down and all the gooeyness runs all over the coffee cake and in it. So we, we made quite a few and we're still making a, a lot of them these days. It's, it's a staple here at Little Dutch Bakery. People say, what are you gonna do when you retire, Chris? I'm gonna do whatever I wanna do. I've been baking at home. Um, I really feel that I'm still gonna have my hands in it somehow. I, I baked some cookies the other night. I'm not turning my big ovens on in here, so I baked them at home in my little test kitchen. It will give me a chance to make small batches of bread, um, different kind of cakes and things of that nature, because I can still get my ingredients at the bakery here and, and, and kind of experiment, I guess. And it'll give me, uh, it'll, it'll keep my hands in it and probably keep me happy that way. And it'll keep my family happy because they get to eat the stuff. So.